Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Today is the second in my new series of videos about how to store the crops you grew and give you some ideas of what to do with them. Today's featured veggie is carrots. My two current favorite varieties of carrots to grow are short stuff Chantonet and Scarlet Nantes. I hope your carrot crop grew well for you this year. I've heard from a few folks saying that their carrots didn't develop normal roots. And my very best tip to share is that you want to add bone meal to the soil before you plant the seeds. Bone meal is high in phosphorus and phosphorus promotes root growth. You don't want to give your plants nitrogen fertilizers because those promote leafy green growth and that's not what you're looking for. Now I shot a video on how to grow carrots earlier this season and I'm going to put a link to it in the video description. We harvested our carrot crop after they had gotten frosted in the fall. And you'd think that isn't something you want to have happen, but actually the frosts make the roots sweeter, which is fabulous. So let's talk about how we store the carrots. And if you watched my video on beets last week, it's the exact same method. So we got a large plastic bin and we lightly moistened some straw. So we put in a layer of straw, then a layer of carrots a layer of straw, and a layer of carrots, and so on. This method works for almost all root crops. We don't use it for potatoes, however. Once the bin is full, we put it into our chili garage, and they keep well there for the entire winter until we use everything up. Let's talk about food preservation. Did you know that I actually have a preserving the harvest section on my website? I'm going to put a link to it from the video description so that you can check it out. It shows the different ways that we preserve things and also cook with different types of crops. I wanted to talk for a moment about food safety because this is so important. You know, there are so many different ways of preserving our harvest. That can include things like freezing, canning, pickling, dehydrating, and so on. And what you really need to know is that vegetables are very low acid foods. If you think about fruits, they are high acid. And so let's say you wanna can some peaches or make some applesauce and can that, you can safely use a water bath canning method. But with vegetables, because they're low acid, you absolutely must use a pressure canner. Now we don't have a pressure canner, and so we use different types of methods of preserving the different crops that we grew. The National Center for Home Food Preservation has a great website with free and reliable information on the different methods. I'll put a link in the video description. The Ball Blue Book is a wonderful guide as well. They put out a new edition every few years and the Blue Book contains both instructions for different types of canning methods and it's filled with all sorts of wonderful recipes. Here's part of the chapter on processing tomatoes. It's got all kinds of tips and different types of recipes for making things like tomato sauce, tomato soup, salsa, and so on. I wanted to let you know that I recently created an Amazon storefront for my website. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I just added a new section that is on food preservation because that goes hand in hand with growing your own food, right? So the ball blue book is in there. There's canning jars, different types of canning equipment and something I'm going to be talking about shortly. So I'll be sure to put a link to it in the description of this video. Here's my website, susansinthegarden.com. You'll see a link to shop. And then there's a link on this page that goes right to it. So I thought I'd discuss what we do with our carrots. So first of all, you saw how we're storing them in our garage. And eating fresh carrots is a delight, especially when they came from your very own garden because they're so much more flavorful than what you can buy in the store. So they make a great snack. Carrots are great additions for savory dishes. So things like soups, stews, 
stir fries, and casseroles. One of our favorite savory dishes to use carrots in is a risotto. The recipe is called caramelized carrot risotto and I found it in a Sunset magazine ages ago. And I found the recipe online, so I'm putting a link to it in the video description. You definitely have to try it because it's delicious. One easy way to preserve your carrots so that you can use them in the future is by freezing them. And it's very simple. You bring a pot of water to a boil. You slice the carrots or you can cut them in chunks. You boil them in the water for about two minutes and then you put them into cold water in your sink, drain them, dry them, and put them in your freezer bags, pop them into your freezer. Very simple. And think about all the wonderful baked goods that you can use carrots in. So things like muffins, sweetbreads, and of course, the famous carrot cake. And last but not least, consider something called lacto-fermentation. This is where you put vegetables or fruits into a brine for a certain period of time. And there are all sorts of health benefits from eating that. So in this case, we're talking carrots. And Bill and I teamed up yesterday to get that process started. So I want to show you how that works. Last year, we purchased a Mason Tops fermentation kit, which I've added to the food preservation section of my Amazon store, just so you can see what I'm referring to. All we needed, aside from the carrots, was garlic, salt, and water. You can add in peppercorns or whole spices if you wish. You can also use white distilled vinegar if you'd like. We sliced the carrots and garlic and filled two wide mouth pint jars. Bill used the vegetable tamper to compress the carrots a bit. Then he added water and salt. At that point, he put a glass weight on the top of the carrots in each jar. You can see here that Bill has added the fermentation lid, which allows gases to escape, and then screwed on the metal ring for each jar. We put the jars into an area of our kitchen that's out of direct sunlight. We'll check them in five days, but they usually need about 10 days. Once we open them, we'll store them in the refrigerator until we've eaten them all. The fermented carrots are delicious as snacks or additions to salads. Okay, that's everything for this week. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. Next week, I'll be back with a discussion on a different type of a crop. See you then.